Welcome everyone. So ba basically, we will today. I'm really excited uh, to show you uh, um, or, or or new topics. Yeah, uh, in TCPCM uh, uh, since uh, 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 um, since uh, I see a lot of new faces as well. I will try to also cover uh, what is TCPCM in general. Yeah, and and but uh, as well, I will focus mainly on the topics that we we have uh, 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 brought in the last six months yeah and uh, uh, obviously uh, as, as you might know uh, we want and our goal is to optimize your cost control within your companies yeah and with a hot topic of the carbon footprint uh, calculation okay let's move on uh, so basically what uh, i've prepared here really short agenda uh, with a kind of short introduction but then uh, we will go through the three topics really uh, uh, excited about uh, in the announcement uh, uh, on the uh, predictive costing yeah and the non linear predict uh, 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 performance pricing yeah uh, solution that we have in within Siemens uh, in the last year uh, also how to determine co2 footprint in your components yeah analyze uh, and a uh, final but not last uh, uh, analyze faster cost structures with the multiple cost breakdown capability yeah so basically, uh, during the intro and the, the predictive costing, I will also introduce a quick demonstration of what TCPCM uh, and how it works. Yeah, for those people who are not, and I see half of the people 50-50 in this session, uh, who are not used to TCPCM or never seen TCPCM before. Yeah. So let's do a quick intro uh, for this. Uh, we know the current situation. Uh, currently is that they have their own homegrown systems yeah uh, uh, a lot of companies still do uh, with money disconnected spreadsheets with multiple tabs with no standardized methodology with no integration to other systems like cat models etc putting a lot of manual work into it and poor understanding of cost drivers yeah so this what leads to is uh, and and this is not new companies with cost overruns or with uh, missing the target cost because uh, 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 the, there is a change during the project and uh, maybe you will run into unprofitable business. Yeah, this is what we want to avoid. Uh, we all know the limitation of a spreadsheets. Yeah, and what we want to offer to you is really simple. It's a solution which we call the digital twin of cost. And what about this digital twin, how it supports your company? It's really simple. It will help you to increase the speed and the quality and accuracy of your quotations. Yeah, so you will be able to do money more at the same time. It will also do cost costing process optimization. Yeah, so we have a kind of a workflow, and you are able to save your calculations for later reuse. Yeah, and it also you will have reduction of lead times and interfaces. Yeah, with an integrated landscape and optimization of internal processes and systems. Yeah, such as uh, a CAD integration and traceability up to date data. Yeah, so you will be able to track and see all the versions uh, uh, through the lifetime of the project. Yeah, and uh, also you will be able to simulate a scenarios. What, what if my customer or my supplier uh, suddenly changes the quantity or changes uh, uh, the volume or is there a design change? How can I simulate this? Yeah, and this will allow you to ensure target cost, yeah, which is the most important uh, profitable target cost. You will also be able to, in the purchasing, uh, save up to 20% of cost savings, yeah, obtain those. And you will also be able to uh, be much faster in the quotation costing, yeah. So uh, this is uh, the, the, the hot topic, yeah. And what about the digital twin? So what we offer in Siemens is the digital twin, yeah. Basically, we offer the digital twin of product digital twin of production, digital twin of performance, yeah, with our BAS solution within Siemens. Uh, and now we are able to tell you, okay, now let's go for, to move forward to the digital twin of cost. Yeah, and this uh, is basically a virtual feedback. You are always in the loop giving uh, feedback for continuous improvement, yeah, to the product, to the design team, to the production, and to the, uh, and, and now, and last, to, to have a virtual CO2 footprint yeah, of what should your product 
be like. Yeah. So basically, now what we can do, and this is uh, uh, one of the latest slides of the intro, uh, where we are positioned. Yeah. This is the lifetime of the product, and uh, uh, obviously you will recognize it from the early concept until after market and EOP, end of production and end of services. Yeah where uh, uh, enterprise resource planning like SAP takes care, takes care of the costing uh, from the start of production. And here on the left side is where we are positioning ourselves yeah, with uh, uh, helping in different use cases, yeah, such as target costing, profitability, design to cost, purchase price analysis, open book negotiation, and now the CO2 footprint is the trending topic. Yeah. So uh, basically, you are able to do all the shoot cost and carbon accounting with Team Center Product Cost Management. Before, as you might know, some of you and are users of the bottom-up approach. Others will not know. Now we are a new in the top-down. So we have this new non-linear performance pricing yeah, solution that will allow you to do all the full assembly in case uh, you're, you, you do complex products with a lot of parts and you're not you don't have the time to do the the, 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 the bottom up for each component of your of your product, therefore you go for the top down. Yeah? So all this will not be a digital twin without all these integrations, right? So basically we're talking about integration with PLM to get the bomb or the manufacturing bomb or the materials or the list or the geometry data, yeah, or the ERP where you want to reuse a work plan from the past. Uh, that is really similar to this new one that you want to do, uh, yeah? or basically you want all the material prices with the unique identifier or the unique item numbers. Yeah, You want to store them in PCM so that you don't ha need to go every time to ERP to search for the data, same as the cost rates like labor rates, machine cost or overheads. All these can be integrated in TCPCM. Yeah? And also we have uh, uh, last uh, the reporting to a BI where you can do all these traceability reports, link data. BI stands for business intelligence for those who doesn't know. Yeah, or basically it could be your own standard reporting tool, even though TCPCM also counts with some out of the box reports that we will show today. Okay, this is what we call the digital twin with these use cases. And now what we want to tell you, this is the last slide of the introduction. Uh, uh, this is normally what we find in, in companies uh, that uh, they all do costing from a different perspective. Yeah, so costing is a really ambiguous word where uh, they, they, they use the same word for different terminologies. Yeah, but here we have different departments working in the costing program or the cost evolution through the lifetime. Some only focusing on design, other focusing on before the design starts other focusing on the project and profitability, other focusing only on the purchase components, other focusing on the on the cost breakdown export to customers. All these yeah, work on costing. What we want to do is to integrate them all in the same platform yeah, to, know, to, to manage all this uh, consistency, all this traceability uh, with a standardized methodology and with uh, uh, all these uh, 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 fact-based and cost driver transparent calculations yeah so this is our intention yeah uh, i'm pleased to announce that now we have more than 400 customers using tcpcm worldwide the, uh, and we want to make them happier yeah and if you are not on board uh, uh sit down relax because this demo i think you will enjoy it a lot yeah and uh, obviously uh, i hope that i i did it simple yeah and uh, uh, so that uh, everyone here understands yeah, I, I will not do a, a special <laughs> cost calculation into detail, but I hope you understand the concept of the new features and uh, yeah, uh, basically evolving all these stakeholders. Yeah, so if you are part or in charge of part of these uh, uh, departments, for sure it will be of your interest. Yeah, so let's start with the demonstration. So the first point is discover the power of predicted costing. Yeah, so basically. What we see in the market is that uh, we need to get faster calculation to the market. Yeah? We need to choose uh, what to cost from the ABC part because our assemblies are simply too large yeah? sometimes, or it's, 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 I, I cannot be bothered uh, to cost all the B and C parts. 
I only can focus on the A parts because they are the most expensive or the cost drivers of my product. The B and C I can reuse from SAP, yeah? But what if there is some saving potentials in the B and C parts? We will talk about that later. Uh, and we also need to have uh, all set target costs with the latest integrated reference data to ensure profitable products, yeah? Where today with Excel, this is all, all, all manual input. Yeah, and the obligation to guesstimate prices based on similar historical price or set up target prices without any CAD information. Yeah, so sometimes we even start costing where, where CAD does not exist. So basically how we can support on this, this is what we do. And this is basically our home ground Yeah, uh, in TCPCM. Uh, where, where you want to set a target cost, yeah? You can even use TCPCM to, to calculate your competitor cost, yeah? From your competition uh, in order to do a greenfield versus brownfield or uh, make or buy decisions to a best co country sourcing. You know, you can uh, 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 simulate how will, how will my price be affected if I change my volume, my raw material, my overheads, my change rates, etc. Yeah? And you can create variants, versions with these dimensions, change request, yeah, manufacturing technologies, and all this. Yeah, well, well <laughs> uh, to demo this, it will take me hours. But for this, I did a short, a short introduction, and this is what we focus on on our last webinar. So basically, what I will run is three quick demonstrations for this first part. Yeah, one is to run the bottom-up cost analysis for the A products. Yeah, I will use uh, a battery pack. Yeah, uh, uh, that uh, we have for the, this demonstration purpose of today, and we will import the bomb. I don't mind if it's, this bomb comes from an Excel, from a PLM, from SAP, yeah, from any PLM, from any ERP. Yeah, uh, we can reuse the part numbers. Yeah, we will set make or buy. We will use the raw material. We will use. Uh, we will create the 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 the. the the, the, the process cost, and then we will make it scenarios and comparisons, right? And then what about the B and C parts? We will run the NLPP analysis and then reuse the top-down formula back in TCPCM for the envelope, yeah? So basically here uh, is where I will start the bottom-up analysis for the A parts, yeah? So basically what we find here is this bomb to be costed, yeah, and we have the Oli bus from Siemens, and this, don't worry if you don't have a PLM or access to it, uh, this can be an Excel, normally you will receive this bomb by Excel, by SAP, or does not even exist in your PLM, because this is an offer you want to quote, and you still you did not create uh, any PLM object, right, so, but here for this example, I will, I will want to, to, to import this battery pack, where you can see here, uh, I just open TCPCM and I will import, as you can see, different sources to import SAP, Team Center, Spreadsheet. I will choose Team Center for this purpose. Yeah, and here by just putting the path name, you see how I import quickly this bomb with the geometries. Yeah, and what I will do next is that I will uh, uh, check with the quick editor, for example, which parts of this bomb are already costed. Whoa, I see that all these parts are coming from SAP, excellent. So I need to focus only on the white parts, yeah? And uh, after I do my work, yeah, I have done all this, um, these uh, calculations with the in-house component, with the hourly rates here from SAP with the cycle time. And uh, here I can see all the purchasing components, all the raw material calculators, yeah, uh, that uh, we don't have time today for this, but I can do, I'm can. i pleased to do a webinar, all the purchasing parts with this injection molding part, with the Siemens labor rates and, and all this uh, reference data. And here I see a complex bomb yeah, assembled uh, as for this battery, which costs $513, uh, yeah? And for this, I will make a, a second variant and I will do a relocation of this secondary bomb. As you can see, I can do a mass data change really fast and change everything to US. And now I see, okay, if I do this in the US, it, then Germany is 10% uh, uh, cheaper. It's $464 instead of 513 euros, yeah? So I will move to my previous tab group, yeah? And uh, basically for my next uh, coming video, what about the battery cell, Eduardo? So basically what we have here 
is that uh, this battery, which I don't know how to do a bottom-up calculation, for example, or I don't have the time, but it's a cost driver of my of my uh, assembly this time. Yeah, so we know there are 24 batteries per box, uh, uh, so many boxes per cell, yeah, per pack. So basically, depending on the function, if this is for a house, if this is for a car, if this is for a machine, if this is for a, a, a handrail. Uh, it, it will all have different repercussions yeah so basically what we do is okay this was very nice how do we cost the rest of the parts yeah this is why we will enter this new top-down methodology yeah where we have here uh, on the left this new top-down costing with nlpp hotspot analysis yeah so basically what i see here is that uh, uh, this is a much faster approach than bottom up yeah uh, a very nice consistent portfolio uh, pro portfolio price consistency yeah and this is a, a value a value pricing tool uh, so it makes the prices out of the value of the historical prices yeah and not based on the manufacturing cost i will explain this later in the video uh, respected to bottom up approach is what you have seen where it's really extensive approach uh, but it's really consistency at the part level yeah, and you can sit down and negotiate with your suppliers or your customers with fact-based uh, uh, facts and figures, yeah, and not uh, versus other thing. And it's much easier to negotiate, yeah. But you cannot do that for all your components, yeah. Basically, sometimes you need to rely on the top-down approach, which is also really, really accurate, I can tell you, and you will be surprised. Uh, out of this demonstration, uh, where you need to rely on the BNC parts for the top down. So, and also the A parts, if you want, if you consider this battery as the A part. Yeah. So basically, what the top down on the left is predicts price for a uh, forecast price based on historical standing. So you might have uh, 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 so, some historical data for 25, 50 batteries. 50 type of contracts that you have done in the past for different battery sizes yeah and and, and basically you will find attributes uh, such as it doesn't need to be physical attributes yeah this is the first change it might be charging time capacity voltage power lifetime etc and uh, nlpp what will do for you is will calculate uh, based on these uh, attributes that you put a formula for uh, predicting the target price yeah or you can do the bottom up, which we have on the right side, where you need to go uh, uh, fully uh, bottom up, which I will also show the example. Yeah. So uh, this is also a really nice target setting for the uh, utilizing the top down. So here for the demonstration, I will show for the first time, I'm really excited to do so, the NLPP solution. Yeah. So basically what we have in Siemens. So here, first step is really simple solution. You import your battery uh, data, yeah, where uh, you simply have different batteries. So it's done, you see how difficult it was. So basically this is the first step. So now what the solution needs is to map the columns. Yeah, uh, basically uh, it's, uh, uh, you double click and say, okay, this is price and uh, this volume is the quantity. So, and here you have your first uh, analytic analytical values. Yeah. So, length, width, height, voltage. All these are numerical uh, drivers. Yeah, of the price. And uh, then you might have categorical. Yes, no, high, low, etc. These are categorical. So you select them. Yeah. And here, what you have is the first analytical values. Where are your first 50% price location, which is your maximum, which is your minimum. The formula will consider every dimension. Yeah, this is why it's nonlinear, right? And uh, here you tell, okay, please calculate me the formula based on all these factors. And voila, simple as that. You have different NLPP formulas, more than six. We are unique in this with the Quichi regression, with the quantity regression, etc so that uh, you can have this formula copied to tcpcm we will talk about this later and now what i will do i'm finalized yeah this is how complex it was this is the result landing page where we have here the target price that you paid uh, uh, in the past and this is the the target price that you should have paid and this is the target price that you paid yeah 
and you can filter by color your suppliers. So in one shot, I can see the yellow supplier is really economical. It's always below the green line, the best price. And the, uh, this is an example. And here I just filter for the part that uh, uh, have the most potential savings. Yeah. So uh, these parts, based basically for, because of the volume, you can have up to 25% uh, price uh, reduction. Yeah. So I will show later. So basically, uh, this is a, a hotspot advisor when you can say, okay, find me two parts where I can have this saving potential of 195,000. Yeah, where I have this part that uh, uh, basically, what if I pause here, I paid one dollar for this part, I should have paid 83 cents, 15% savings. Yeah, this is because of the target price, and uh, here I have another part here below. Uh, where uh, with a different supplier, exactly the same, exactly the same performance values than this one, I paid 70 cents. Yeah. So basically, I have even uh, a, a more uh, saving potentials. And this for the purchaser or for the uh, or for the buyer, it's really good solution to tell them, okay, uh, uh, now I understood uh, uh, the solution. Uh, you, you really. Is really simplified, but the key, uh, the key golden formula can be exported to TCPCM to predict a future price of a cylinder per component. Yeah, all the target price will be based on the blue, the worst price will be based on the red, and the best price will be based on the green. Yeah, so this is done and simple. Yeah, now you've seen the demonstration. Yeah, uh, uh, really fast of the NLPP. And uh, uh, feel free to contact me if you have any other other uh, uh, questions, if you want a more extensive uh, demonstration of this NLPP. Yeah. So now what we've done is this nonlinear performance pricing. We run all the batteries, historical data, and now we exported the formula to TCPCM. And now what we'll show how fast I can run this formula in TCPCM, uh, uh, giving me a fast approach and the, uh, 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 the opportunity to uh, uh, simplify uh, for occasional users or, or less costing uh, 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 manufacturing background, yeah, to run fast and accurate calculations, yeah. So for this, uh, uh, I have here my next video, yeah, where we left before. So I put here a battery cell where I located the formula. Uh, really easy, simply to integrate. And now here we can put here all these values, length, width, height, voltage, power, all these values, all these attributes will come from your data set, yeah? So this is just my example of the demonstration. So when I finish, voila, now this is two euro 36, and now I can do a little bit of design to cost, basically, or requirement to cost even. So I, I changed my length, I changed my voltage, I changed my power, I could put here battery type, I could put here amount of copper, amount of nickel, or uh, whichever, yeah, which, which, whatever you think is a cost driver. And here you can have all the formula parameters, yeah, uh, integrated from NLPP. You can change the quantity. It will automatically have a price effect into the uh, uh, really fast into the solution. Yeah. So this is, uh, I don't mind if you use a, a battery. Uh, with the formula doesn't mind if this is for the entire battery pack or we don't mind if this is for a table, simple products or for a full machine or for a, or, 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 or for a warship or, or from a satellite entirely. Yeah, so it doesn't have any limitations on any technologies. So uh, and this was basically uh, the image. What if I do top down? You can do it with the new bomb editor. Yeah. So I showed the, 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 this or you can do a bottom up. Yeah. So basically, uh, maybe you say, OK, target cost should be 236 really fast. This will help you what I said in the beginning to speed your quotation process. You can do target cost really fast if you have old several that in TCPCM or uh, and you can focus the in bottom up for all these parts that you think it's worth to uh, to to focus, yeah. So it's also a, a, a driver indicator to to tell you, okay, these these are the outliners uh, of your bomb, and uh, please focus on this purchasing team because here is where we can uh, identify the most the, the the better cost savings, yeah. So uh, this was 
the uh, the, the first point, yeah, where uh, you can discover all the saving and potential price cuts for individual products or groups, yeah. You can use the formula to create valid price forecasts. Yeah, you saw it in the last uh, AVI. So this is really simple to do. And uh, you can save processing time. You, it's really fast. Yeah, and you can leverage this hotspot analysis and use it as a solid basis uh, of, for discussions with, with your suppliers. It will not be the same negotiation that if you go with a cost, uh, if with a bottom up. Yeah, it, instead you go with the supplier saying, hey, why did I uh, why are you quoting me this price if historically you gave me for the same requirements uh, a 20% uh, uh, cheaper quote two years ago? This is a real solid uh, based uh, uh, discussion with negotiation with your suppliers. Yeah. Also, you can validate it with a bottom up where uh, either with a supplier or customer, it will help you to support with extra arguments, yeah, which is always nice in these uh, times. Okay, I hope uh, you liked it. Now we will go to our second topic, hot topic for the webinar, and this is how to determine the CO2 footprint in your components. Yeah, as we know, this is a, a really trending topic, especially in the EU, which will overcharge due to uh, uh, to companies due to large CO2 emissions, yeah? So and now you will have your company uh, asking you to meet your CO2 targets, yeah? So what you want is from the early stages, before you start developing the product, to understand the impact uh, uh, on the CO2 footprint, understand the impact on the climate change, yeah? And you want to increase this transparency uh, for the low carbon products that you will uh, make on the, on the future, yeah? For this, uh, what we have now is a trade-off, yeah, left or right. Now uh, we believe in the next 10 years, uh, the topic will be that a cost engineer or a purchasing or a design engineer will not be only focused on the cost and the weight, uh, but also the CO2 environmental uh, uh, impact uh, uh, that will have uh, your, your designs and your, your products into the market, yeah. So maybe you will find even a supplier which is a little bit more costly but much more environmental friendly. So uh, you, you will have to decide there, right? Cost versus uh, uh, CO2. And this is a, a hot topic that I see you will face in the future, yeah. So now for this demonstration, we will continue with the battery pack that we've done and uh, uh, we will uh, very simply go addressing the CO2 uh, and this is the first footprint that we are doing yeah in the next releases we will enhance it but for now we have these two the, addressing the CO2 in material for purchase components at substance level and addressing the CO2 footprint in production yeah so I'm also excited to show you the new uh, bomb editor coming yeah in the next release so basically what we have here is on the top line the CO2 footprint roll up. Yeah, this could be also for cost. Yeah, but I simplified the view for this demonstration. Here we have the plate or the plastic. Yeah, with the scrap. Uh, and this is the CO2 footprint for substance. And here in light blue below, you will have the CO2 footprint for the purchase paths. Yeah, before we go to the manufacturing. So for this, we will go and see how we can optimize the CO2 footprint in your early phases. Yeah. You imported these bombs, and now I will open for this uh, Germany uh, uh, assembly this uh, bomb editor where you have here all the images. It will help you to identify also really faster uh, what you are quoting. And here you have the plate, and obviously you have here, for example, DC04. And now, what if I change it to DC01? Yeah, now I see. Uh, 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 it, it, it simply reduced the, uh, the CO2 carbon footprint, yeah? And uh, now I see, okay, uh, I can simulate if I change my, my, my substance. Uh, for example, for ABS, uh, I will change to PP. Uh, what if I change to PP? Is it lower? Yes, it is quite lower. Uh, uh, polypropylene that ABS, excellent. Uh, now I'm more environmental friendly, yeah? If it still meets my my requirements yeah for for the tolerance for whatever material you use yeah so basically what you need is the co2 database by, by, by substance by region etc 
Yeah, so and, and the purchase component, you can ask the suppliers and you can put a direct input in the CO2 footprint from your supply chain, yeah, which uh, uh, for starters, they might not know, but you can do a shoot cost to do the CO2 footprint calculator. Okay, and for the manufacturing, what we've prepared is the quick editor, yeah, uh, a basic, really basic example. So you have the uh, uh, footprint top uh, in the roll up, you have the footprint of the machine here, and you have the CO2 factor for energy here, be, be, uh, depending on country. So what we will do is that uh, uh, we will show you here in the quick editor the same thing. We will do instead of opening the bill of material, I will open the quick editor for the CO2. Uh, this is a new uh, vision that I, I've I put. So you can have here all the different uh, uh, regions of machines. So here I have a plastic part on the top. And what I can say, okay, this is the energy factor for Germany. Yeah, and uh, uh, basically uh, uh, what you can do here, you can filter for uh, uh, cost factor details. And here you have the carbon footprint for energy, for substance, and you will find different uh, energy uh, for electricity, for gas, for oil, uh, uh, factors for depending by the country. So basically, okay, uh, now what you can have uh, is the power of simulation. So what if I change to US, yeah, this part, and uh, now automatically you will see, okay, uh, the, the cost is a bit cheaper, but it's a little bit more higher in the energy consumption, this will change month by month, year by year, yeah. And uh, but what if I reduce the the machine size, yeah, uh, and I choose a smaller angle? Okay, I will need to put to put less parts per cycle, but maybe it's worth to see if with a smaller machine I will have. Uh, 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 and this is the trade off that you will do uh, that I choose a, a smaller machine, and now from twenty six uh, uh, I, I have my. Uh, uh, reduced to, to 19 kilos, yeah, from 26 to 19 kilos, the CO2, uh, CO2 footprint per hour. And now what I see is that, okay, I went uh, from 504 to 498 uh, uh, kilos. Uh, so I did my CO2 reduction, yeah. So not only price, but also, and cost, but also the CO2 you are able to simulate, yeah. So uh, this is really hot topic. And I, I hope you, you enjoy it. And uh, obviously, uh, uh, this is uh, uh, a thing that we will continue, a topic that we will continue to, to, to improve. But also with this is that uh, you can make your business decision towards the, the, the CO2 footprint. It will be a, a, a sustainable uh, 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 products that you need to make for the future. Yeah, And you will also can deliver feedback designed to echo uh, to your suppliers or to your internal designing team yeah, and uh, obtain the full view, uh, making this trade-off and tell your supply chain uh, that the CO2 will be in real near future, if it's not already, uh, a solid basis for discussion and negotiation. Yeah, So this is a really important topic Yeah, that uh, if you don't see it now, don't worry, it will come to any industry I see. Okay, and the last one, uh, and this is the nice uh, uh, to speed uh, the, the, the quotation time, yeah, and uh, analyze faster the cost structures. Uh, now we have this multi import uh, cost breakdown capability. Okay, and this is because uh, basically what we see is that you need to reduce lead times, yeah, you need to be faster, obligation to answer within two weeks. Yeah, you need to put all details into the CVD format, into a customer CVD. It takes you hours to, to put them into any cost breakdown template. Yeah, and uh, 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 but you need to spend less time in this administrative task, yeah, in non-productive task. So basically what we uh, see is that here you have uh, TCPCM and you have multiple cost breakdowns to import or even export yeah to different customers it depends if you're an oem or a supplier yeah from any industry so what we've done is in orange is that now i'm able to import uh, multiple cost breakdowns yeah but you're also able to export uh, customer cost breakdowns you are able to export all these standard cost breakdowns formats available yeah so what uh, what we've prepared for this demonstration, what if you receive a massive uh, amount of cost breakdowns? Yeah, I don't want to import one by one or I don't want to spend time uh, uh, identifying uh, different formats. Yeah, so 
what I have is this battery with these four parts. And now what I can do is I can import, import BOM from Cost Breakdown or from BOM or from Spreadsheet, yeah. Uh, 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 we, we click here and I have four Cost Breakdowns and I can import them all at once, yeah. So I, we don't mind if it's two, 20, 25 Cost Breakdowns, you can import them all at once, yeah. So now you see it's been created. And now what you can do is create a comparison result. I've done it myself but in quick editor. Yeah, so I created a quick editor comparison for quickly uh, uh, drive the, uh, the the comparison. Yeah, so I open two and really fast. I can see, okay, create me two scenarios. This is the greenfield versus the brownfield. And I can see, okay, let's start with the last part because it's 100 parts. This is cost driver. Oh, I see the rate and the cycle time is not the same. The, the rest is, is more or less the same, yeah? So here is where we have uh, these, these uh, uh, differences, right? So uh, uh, really fast, uh, you, 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 you can identify all this. Let's move it to the previous group. And now I will create uh, my cost breakdown for the news uh, that uh, the new people here joined. I can create a comparison calculation of this battery cover. This is make versus buy. And now uh, uh, we can drag and drop the other calculation to, to see uh, directly really fast uh, uh, where are the difference. So I see difference in material, manufacturing, where in manufacturing, uh, uh, okay, is laser cutting, not in assembly or inspection. And okay, it's only the machine, not the labor. Yeah, so very, very quickly, you can identify where are the cost drivers, where are the differences between you and your customer or your supplier. Yeah, so this is really nice that uh, uh, you can do this faster that if you were doing it with your own cost models, yeah? So um, at the end of the day, it's uh, uh, improvements that we want to do, yeah? Uh, also, you can integrate your own costing templates, yeah? Uh, uh, basically, if you have, I, hey, Eduardo, I have my own costing template, can I integrate it for my suppliers so that I can do the same thing that you've done? Yes, of course, we can integrate any costing template. Uh, we also have a new API that allows you to export all these calculations to your business intelligence. Due to time, I could not uh, 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 integrate it, and uh, um, in the demonstration. But I will ha I will be happy to uh, to to show you this later. Uh, and also, uh, it saves pounds, hours, I will say days of admin work from your sales or commercial uh to export all these cost breakdowns at once yeah and and also uh, uh speed your quotation process yeah so this is really easy to understand and uh now what we will do is to summarize yeah uh, um, and uh, thanks a lot to, to everyone uh, uh that saw this demonstration i hope you liked it i hope you saw and understood the, cha the changes that we have uh in within the our product so basically what uh, uh i will I will summarize everything, yeah? So the benefits uh, are, are really simple, yeah? Uh, it reduces the cost between the new product development introduction phase, yeah? So basically, uh, this TCPCM is used not only during the design phase, but also before, yeah, start the, the design, you want to set a good target cost. We call it preliminary and target cost, yeah? It, uh, some of you are using it uh, for the purchase for the purchase components, yeah, for the purchase price analysis. This is also really nice, uh, a key of success uh, of our customers that they are using it to, to negotiate with the supply chain. We also to reduce quotation preparation time with the cost breakdown uh, with the uh, uh, quotation costing. This is what we focus today. Yeah? And also uh, complexity cost, yeah, basically uh, uh, you, you have all this integrated, yeah, uh, uh, and, and having all the key stakeholders integrated, yeah? Even if all the teams are using still their own Excels or their own uh, uh, CAD tools, we can still ask them to give us the input so that we can be faster to the market. And now, final but not least, reduce the CO2 footprint, yeah? So basically this is to for you to uh, uh, complete the, 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 the uh, to have a complete vision of your product tool and profitability. Yeah, we will talk about this later because uh, uh, I, today I did not have time due to the time uh, to, to do a complete overview, but this will ensure your business 
to be on track for the future, yeah? And uh, now you know we have three parts of our products, yeah? Today we focus mainly on product costing, yeah? This is what we did today. We also have tool costing and project and profitability. And uh, this is why we call an enterprise costing platform because we don't only focus on product cost, we focus on the entire project and profitability. We focus also on tool costing, yeah, on the molds. So basically, uh, 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 other enhancements that we did not have time today to address is that we also have the cost of change, the create of change request, yeah, for, and simulate the scenarios. But I don't want to uh, 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 accumulate them in the baseline until my customer confirms that this change request is actually done, yeah? We also have project assumptions before we could simulate future prices by percentage variation uh, in the project. Now we can do uh, uh, absolute values for material prices, for labor rates, for energy factors, for uh, uh, exchange rates, etc. yeah? So basically uh, we can be much more accurate in the project and profitability scenarios, yeah? where you can simulate also, what if my quantity is reduced 20%, what if my project is not eight years, it will be six, I'm still profitable. All this is a super financial tool that our customers are really happy with. Also, we've done uh, improvements in our tool costing, updating new reference data, yeah, and new ability to import tool layouts, yeah, and uh, much to come in tool costing. I'm very excited to, to to say that in the next uh, uh, year, it will be an incredible enhancement here. And also in the SIF models, we're now able to integrate them in the, in the master data. So it's not a default value anymore. So now you will be able to have different SIF models by region, by segment, by supplier, by plant. Yeah, this is really good because some of your plants does, does not work three SIFs, might work two SIFs. Yeah, and by technology, uh, uh, you might have in the same plant different uh, 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 SIF model, so this is really good, an enhancement uh, that is it will help our customers to be more accurate and faster. And uh, we have improved our integration with this new RESTful API so that we can import and export all calculations to BI technology. Yeah, But due to timing, I did not have time to show you this, apologies, but uh, I hope uh, don't hesitate to contact me if you want to see some of this in detail. Yeah. So uh, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the webinar, yeah, and thank you so much for your uh, for your attendance, yeah. I, I hope uh, uh, that you enjoy and and you see the potential of growth of business in your in your domain and and see how TCPCM can support you, yeah. So, uh, Tim, if if any questions, feel free to uh, to to ask them, yeah. Yes, thanks, uh, Eduardo. A um, few questions came in. Uh, please feel free indeed to uh, uh, send any additional questions uh, during the next 15 minutes that we have to answer these. Um, first question, Eduardo. Is there any technology limitation when using NLPP? Is it for single parts only? Okay, good. Good to ask. No, this is not for single parts only, and it's not technology limited. As said, okay, I showed I showed a battery, yeah, but uh, basically you can use it for any type of product, yeah. Uh, the 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 big uh, uh, milestone here is that you need historical data, yeah. This is more uh, towards cost anal analyst, yeah, and uh, 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 basically uh, uh, there there is we have customers from from aerospace uh, industries, medical industry, uh, uh, medical devices, uh, uh, even uh, machine builders uh, are using NLPP uh, or, or really low production or uh, uh, to set up target prices really fast. Yeah. So basically there is no technology limitation and it's not only for path costing, it's, it's for the full assembly if you want to. Thanks for uh, answering the question, uh, Eduardo. Um, next question. Hopefully it's an easier question. <laughs> uh, can this cost management tool calculate project costs as well? Uh, recurrent and non-recurrent to handle the financial studies later? Uh, yes, I, I say it. Uh, I didn't have time to present this to uh, in the um, in the 
in this webinar, but obviously one of our pillars is project and profitability. Uh, um, so basically in the project level is where you uh, put all your non-recurring cost, yeah, uh, uh, and uh, you put all your billable time uh, that are not directly uh, impacted by the product, um, could be prototype, it could be uh, design, it could be design activities, etc. All these billable times and uh, dedicated machines or tools are in the project level so that then you can do a full anal profitability analysis of the business case. Yeah. So uh, this I'm very happy to uh, do another webinar if you if if you're interested. Uh, thanks, Eduardo. Um, then one final question that came in. Um, can any cost breakdown template be configured in Teams and product cost management? Yes, yes. Uh, we have some available for the auto industry, like BMWs, uh, Daimler, Volkswagen, um, and uh, I can remember a few others, uh, but uh, um, uh, any template either if it's for internal purposes or for external cost breakdowns can be configured. And uh, this is only a couple of uh, service days from the Siemens experts uh, because they do that every day. We have customers with more than uh, 12 cost breakdowns already uh, um, working within their uh, TCPCM systems. Yeah. Uh, so basically this is uh, uh, no question. Yeah. So. Yes, the answer is yes. Any cost breakdown, as far as you know, if you have the formulas, etc., uh, to so that we can integrate them properly. Thank you, uh, Eduardo. Uh, that was the, the last question that came in. Um, I think uh, it needs no explanation that uh, if there are any additional questions later on, uh, people interested can uh, can address you. Um, but I guess uh, that's it for now. Okay, so uh, thank you very much everyone for joining. I hope you enjoyed the time and I uh, please here you have my email if you if you have any further questions. Thank you.